Hey YouTube, today I want to make a video on how to wash your car and uh, it's a lot trickier than it looks and uh, you can uh, do many things wrong to your car and so I'm here to show you the stuff you can do right. So I'm going to start with your bucket prep. Alright, you get, get yourself two buckets. Um, Despite this looking dirty, it's not. It's just something that's in the bottom of the bucket, and I've used this bucket for years, and it doesn't come off, so you don't have to worry about it. But ideally, your bucket would want to look clean like that. But anyway, so you get yourself um, one bucket, and this is my clean bucket, so I got it full of clean water. And this is going to be my soap bucket, and I highly recommend just getting down to Walmart and getting one of these, uh, um, they call them wash mitts, but I don't put that on my hand, but because of the way it's designed, it works really well. Um, and this is going to be my soap bucket. And then here we got the car. Today is a perfect day because it's overcast. Um, you want to make sure that the paint is cool to the touch, not hot. And uh, you don't want to do this in direct sunlight. Ideally it would be to uh, do it over with a, maybe a canvas covering, but some people don't have that luxury. And um, I guess I'll review my products that I'm going to use real quick. And I'm actually missing one, so I'll explain the step. So. I really like this. This is Meguiar's Ultimate Car Wash and Wax. And uh, then this is uh, Black Magic's um, Car Wash. And there's some baking soda. And there's some cannabis. Or I don't even know how you pronounce that. I always mess that up. Uh, so, da, da, da. This is the Brazilian, well, Carnuaba. Carnuaba wax. Um, basically, you want to make sure you're using just that. And that's a naturally occurring wax from some trees in Brazil or something like that. And uh, that's like been the go-to product for the guys that are really serious about shining their cars. So I use, highly recommend using that wax. And I um, also got this really cool thing. I'll try to get a link to this. This is my foam sprayer. And then that's just a spray gun thing. So um, to get going, when you do your car, you want to do it in sections. And so what I think of my car is... You got the bottom section here, and this is going to be your dirtiest area because all the dirt and debris. And like, I'm going to put a um, plastic deal, and that kind of helps keep that down. And uh, kind of get your wheels. That's kind of a really dirty section. The front of your car, your lower bumper is going to be really dirty because you're going to hit a lot of bugs. This is going to be a harder area to clean because you're hitting bugs and stuff. Um, and then we got your top section, and then. Look at your cars for body, body panels. You got like a rear section, a door, a front fender, a roof. In the back, you got that bottom bumper is going to be a really dirty section. And then as you go up, it gets cleaner just because of the nature of the car. But so the first thing you want to do is just rinse off the car and get it cool. And actually, what I like to do is I, I put up my windshield deals before I start. I'm kind of rushing because I got to get to work pretty soon. So I need to get this uh, video going. So I will, um, here's my hose. I'm just gonna put a spray on there and then uh, show you. So the first thing I'm do, gonna do is just rinse it off. And that's to get, if you look up here, I don't know if this is showing up on camera, but there's this little, you know, dirt up here and stuff like that. So you just wanna blow that easy to get off stuff off and, and get the car wet. And so I'm gonna pause the camera while I put it back on the, tripod and then I'll show you that. Okay, I'm going to kind of rush this. Like I said, I'm kind of getting ready for work. Um, actually, I'm going to hit the wheels first, kind of lower, um, just because they need the most soaking. And then um, you'll just see what I'm doing here. I like to go around the bottom then hit the top.
Okay, now that I got the car wetted down, that was like way faster than I usually go, but like I said, I'm in a hurry. So I'll show you my next step, which is pretty cool. Um, actually, I might be able to just do this right here in one take. Okay, so I got my spray bottle. I got it pre-filled with some water. And I want to start with, let me flip this around so I can see what I'm doing. You want to start it with uh, this. And the reason why I'm doing this is this is just car, uh, car wash, no wax involved. And in this case, it takes about four caps. And I'm in a rush, so I'm just going to dump some in. And then these are really nice, and you'll see why here in just a second. So I'm going to pause the camera because i got to switch out hose connectors. Okay, so I got this spray gun on it, and it's pretty cool. I'll try to get a link to this uh, and put it in the description. It's got a quick release mechanism. It's built for pretty good products or parts. It says it's from Gilmore. Again, I'll research this out. So I already put my soap in there. Got my lid on. I should have twirled it around. Usually I use a straw like as a stir stick. And this can clip on. Well, this will clip on and off. Well, the cat's playing around. Um, so next I'm going to um, foam the car and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I'm going to foam the car right now. Um, this is just a pure car wax, no, or excuse me, car wash, no wax in it. And uh, here we go. You know, like to start on the wheels. Kind of do the lower first, real quick. Okay, then uh, I'm gonna start at the. I can't hear me. I'm gonna next do the top and work my way down. Okay, so I just foam that up real quick. Again, when I'm not in a rush, I take my time a little bit. Um, and the idea is that it's kind of like washing your hair. Um, that's I'm going to let that soak in for a few minutes. And that's going to help uh, loosen up all the surface dirt before I even touch the car. And then uh, I guess I can start on the next step here. And I'm going to rinse it off. Okay, I'm not going to sit there and make you watch me rinse off the car, so I'm going to pause it. Okay, next what I did is I added the soap to the soap bucket and just kind of switched it around a little bit. Uh, you want to read your soap instructions so, so you know how much soap to put in there. And then uh, now I'm going to hand wash the car and I'm going to start from the top and work my way down. And uh, so at this point we got all the easy grime knocked off. And this is an important step because you don't want to, um, what messes up car paint or the clear coat is um, when you're actually rubbing dirt into it and so by blowing off all the top dirt I got like probably most of the dirt that's going to cause any damage on there so next I'm just going to shampoo and I shampoo wash the car and I'll just show you a couple spots and I do it in sections so I start from the top and work my way down so I'll just do the hood first and then rinse it so you want to do a section and then wash it and then rinse it and move on your off next sections so maybe I'll do two sections and then I'll pause the camera So 
next you want to throw this inside your water bucket. And now I'm going to rinse the top off as soon as I turn on the water. So I just re-lubricated that section that I'm going to do next, that's important. And I like to split my door in half. Okay, I want to show you a couple things. So I'm just going to do that process the whole time on the car. Rinse the section you're going to do, and I, I don't know if you could hear me, I said I split my door in half. I do the top half and the bottom half separate, just because of the way dirt usually lays on there. But that's all there is to it. And you want to do each section like that. Wet it, soap it, rinse it, and then go to the next section. And then I always like to wash from the top down, even when I... So you kind of like rewash in sections you already did. I want to show you my bucket setup. Um, Hopefully this is coming out. So, after washing, all you do is just dunk it, swish it around, and you're good to go. Um, then you just maybe wring it out. That pushed off any dirt. And as you saw, the car is already clean, so I shouldn't be picking up very much dirt. And you just shake it around, boom, that's all you need to do, and then you got your soap ready to go. Hope that came up on film. So that's all I was going to doing with the bush bucket there. Um, so then, so after you do that, you'll eventually get the whole car clean. I don't really mess around with the wheels because the wheels are extremely dirty. And um, oh, here I want to show you something. Let's say you're doing the front buck, the front. I'll use half my mitt. This is showing up here. I'll use half my mitt, like wash all the way up to the license plate, and then I'll flip over and use the other half to do the other side. That way you're not um, getting a lot of dirt. You're not washing dirt onto the car. Again, that's your big enemy, is scrubbing dirt into your car. And it looks like, you know, you have bug juice and stuff like that, so that eliminates that. And anytime, like if you hit a really dirty spot, flip the rag. And you could even do, the nature of that mitt is you could do it in four sections if you had to, but if you're doing small sections, it'll go really quick and you won't have to worry about that. Um, let's see, another thing I want to show you is baking soda. Let me zoom up close, see if I can find, oh, here's perfect. So this isn't really dirt, but it'll get the point across. Let's see if this will show up here. Darn, I can't really see. Let me, uh, trying to get my finger right there. I'm gonna actually back it off. Maybe it'll show up on camera. But there's a little piece of, I don't know what, bird poop or something there. So let me show you how I use my baking soda. Be right back. So after you get the whole car washed, you want to come back and get any hard spots that you couldn't get with the mitt. So you just sprinkle a little baking soda on it. See if that came up on camera. Yeah. And then you get your mitt. You just wet it up. And then you just scrub it in with your mitt. Now baking sodas, oh yeah, that was perfect. That was some kind of goop on there. And then you use, just keep rinsing like you used to. And I'm just going to wash this off. So baking soda is really cool stuff. Um, they use it for sandblasting sometimes, and um, I think they call it soda blasting or something like that. But it won't scratch your paint, and it's kind of like a weird abrasive that won't scratch stuff. So that's a little tip right there. And so you do that. 
until you got completely all the dirt off. And then what you'd want to do is, let me back up here. Assuming I cleaned the whole car and I got all the little blemish dirt spots off so the car is completely clean. Then what I like to do is I hit it with the foamer one more time. You saw me using that foam gun. And then I rinse it off. That's just to make sure there's no residual anything on there. So now the car is perfectly clean. So then you come back and you look for your imperfections. And this one, it's got a lot. Um, I don't know if this is going to show up on film. Plus it's wet. But So let's say you have swirl marks. That's where you let the... He went to the volunteer car wash. Well, here's a good one here. Let's see if I can get that on camera. Right there. Oops. I don't know if that's going to show up, but I'll give it a try. Should be right around there. Right here, there's a scratch. I can't feel oh, it. I don't think I can feel it, but I might. It's hard to tell. It's so light that I can... If I am feeling it, I barely am. Uh, if you play guitar, it messes up the, your fingertips a little bit. So, um, Actually, I could probably feel it better with my left hand. Nah, I can't feel it, but I can definitely see it. And so the baking soda is not going to take that out. So that right there, you'd want to use like a, um, a, a polisher. Now they have, um, what do they call it? Rubbing compound, and then we have rubbing polishers. Don't want to use a compound. Compound's too coarse and it'll cut into the paint. And it's used for a different process, and you're not trying to do that. So you can get a polisher, and you can try it by hand. I actually recommend you try it by hand first. Because um, if you can get it by hand out, that's better and less, less aggressive. So you'd like get that little scratch out with some rubbing polish, not compound. And if um, you felt comfortable with it and you got good at it, you could get yourself a little buffer and start buffing it out. I'm not going to show that for two reasons. Um, one is mostly because I don't have any compound in that and I'm kind of strapped for time. So you'd go back and you'd get all the little imperfections out of your paint like that. And then um, also any swirl marks, as well as if you go to a brand new car paint, and you can tell who doesn't know how to take care of their car because you look in the sunshine and um, it'll have uh, little circular scratches all around it in a circular pattern no matter where you look at it. That means somebody is washing it and they didn't take the steps that I recommended and they put little swirl marks or tiny scratches inside their um, top coat. Paint's got two modern paint jobs use a two paint process. They got um, they have what they call the base coat which is the paint and then after that dries and it never really dries but after it cures then they put a top coat on top of that or a clear coat on top of that and that kind of protects it and so most of the damage you're hoping is all in that clear coat because you can kind of file that back. They put it on several layers and you can kind of like in this case the polisher should just smooth out the clear coat and get rid of that scratch because it hasn't gone into the base paint yet um, and you can kind of tell that because of the color how it's kind of like white so, anyhow, after you get all those imperfections out, then what you want to do is put like a sealer on it. And I don't have a sealer with me um, because I don't have a polisher to get my imperfections out. Because once you put a sealer on it, that's kind of like a, a super uh, a super wax type. It's usually a polymorph. Um, and you put that on there and it's going to last for like maybe six months or something. And that's because you spend a lot of time. It's going to take you a long time to get all these little imperfections and get your car paint perfect. So once you do that, you lock it in with a sealer. And then after that, then you use that wax. So I've shown you that yellow wax. Well, it's the yellow can here. And this wax right here. And again, you want to just make sure it's that Brazilian tree wax. And it's all natural and organic. Um, just read the labels. And you want to make sure it's pure wax and no other compounds. If they got other compounds, they're probably like cutting compounds. And you don't want any of that extra stuff in there. Same with your washing soap. You just want washing soap. Make sure there's no wax on it. So in this case, like if I don't, if I'm in a hurry, that's where I'd switch to that. Because I can put that in my ball, spray it on my clean car, and it'll put a quick wax on it and kind of lock me in. Uh, that's if I don't have time to go to this. This is what you really want to do. This is what you do if you're in a rush. This will make your car look really nice. Um, but people like don't get those imperfections out, and then they put car wax on it. And so when it comes time to get those imperfections out, it's going to be harder. Sorry about rushing this, but I got to get going, and hopefully, um, that'll give you enough information on how to wash your car. If you have any questions or want me to back up and go over something in more detail, uh, let me know in the comments below, and I'll do that. And again, I kind of apologize for rushing this, but hopefully, it gets the gist on how you want to wash your car. One last thing is, I see people selling those dirt guard things. 
they're kind of expensive, man. It's thirteen dollars or something, and uh, it's probably like a something that should be a dollar. And uh, I'm not a big proponent of them because I don't think they work that well. And the reason why I say that is, I mean, if you had it, it wouldn't hurt to use it. But um, if you like, there's after washing my car, there's not very much dirt in it because of the procedure I do. And if I reverse the process and actually like, pour dirt in my clean bucket and said, here's my objective. I got a clean rag. I'm just going to throw it like this, and I want dirt to end up on my rag. Do you think that would happen? Nah. Um, I don't, you know, if the product was reversed and that's how it was supposed to work. I mean, if I didn't use a dirt guard and I just sort it like that, dirt's not going to, like, jump up on my sponge. Um, and plus, right here, I wring it, and then I just dump it into my soapy water just like that. There's never any dirt on my soapy water, and I don't use dirt guard, so that saves you some money. If you got one, it maybe works, but like I said, when you reverse the logic of things, like if your objective was to put dirt on your sponge, could you do it like that? And, and also the amount of time between washes gives it time for all the dirt to soak to the bottom. And that's supposedly how a dirt guard works anyway, so that's just my two cents on a dirt guard. I don't feel that they were. They definitely shouldn't be 13 bucks, and... If you got one, it wouldn't hurt to use it, but I don't think it's really worth the hassle of playing around with another piece of equipment. Keep this simple. Also, I didn't cover drying. Just get yourself a, a towel uh, like a, oh, that's got a really thick, that almost looks like the wash mitt. It's got a thick plush, I don't know if that's what you call that, thick uh, little <laughs> fibers to it. And, um, you know, cotton's always nice, but... Uh, um, the main thing is, is you just has have a lot of surface area and pushed away. You don't want to use like a flat towel because that'll scratch into it. Uh, you can just wipe down real quick. And if you'll notice, if you use good quality products, like if you look at my roof, I rush that. Um, I've had it dry with just sheets to where I don't get any water spots if you do a good job. Um, and just let it dry without water spots and I don't use any kind of special hose water or anything like that it's just that if you do a good soapy wash job um, the water will kind of beat off on its own and uh, so a lot of times I won't even dry it and it'll still come out without any water spots and I think it gets, it's more because they get dirt in your water and it ca catches on some dirt that's left on the car paint that you can't see but anyways I'm going to wrap this up um, if you like this video select like if you want to see more videos hit subscribe and again please if you have any questions again because i know i rushed this just leave a comment below thank you